Hello and welcome to this edition of Flourish Focus, our monthly date with incredible founders and CEOs from the Flourish portfolio globally. I'm Smita Agarwal and it's my pleasure to shine the spotlight today on Indonesia. It is predicted that by 2025, the digital economy in Indonesia would reach $124 billion, nearly three times jump from the $44 billion in 2020. The pandemic has only accelerated the digital adoption in Indonesia and provided a huge impetus to tech startups. Agriculture is amongst the top five sectors in the country, and as per Tech in Asia, there are at least 48 agri-tech startups in Indonesia. Tani Hub started in 2016, and it's amongst the largest and fastest growing agri-tech startup, which comprises three businesses. B2B e-commerce for uh, agri-produce, a P2P platform for providing funding to farmers, and logistics that streamlines the supply chain from farmer to consumers. It gives me great pleasure to welcome my guest today, Pamitra Veneka, co-founder and CEO of Tani Hub Group. Hi, Eka. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sumita. Um, and thank you, uh, Flourish, for having me on this show. Um, fundraising is always an important milestone in the journey of a startup, and it's fantastic to see how uh, Tani Hub has been, you know, successively uh, doing this over the years. But let's just step back a little and start at the beginning. Um, tell us about your background and your journey as an entrepreneur, Eka. So um, actually, it's it's actually a funny story because I've never imagined myself uh, to be an entrepreneur. I've always, you know, worked um, as a researcher and my background, my parents are also like working in the government or doing research. So that's what I've always uh, thought I've, um, I've got, I'm going to be. And um, the idea of starting Tani Hub actually, um, you know, it, it came by accident uh, while I was doing a social project uh, for some farmers that I met during my uh, research time um, in central Java. So at that time, I, I met these farmers and I and I saw that, you know, these guys were actually uh, really nice and they had uh, good products. But they've always, you know, uh, like other farmers I met there, they always complained that they could not sell um, their, pro uh, their products. And because they can't sell their products, they can't repay their loans. And that's why these banks or these um, uh, microfinance institutions always categorize them as like bad um bad creditors, so uh, bad, uh, bad borrowers. So that's why, you know, I thought that, okay, if I help these farmers get access to market, maybe it will solve their problem uh, on like the repayment for of their loans. So that's how actually Tani Hub started. It's very interesting that you mention uh, that a Tani Hub actually started as a social project out of, you know, uh, you know, as part of your research while you were at World Bank. So how did this then transform into a full fledged standalone business? OK, so from that uh, small social project, a lot of farmers helped uh, that we helped uh, actually felt that, you know, it was really useful. And their, uh, you know, the farmers that initially helped also their income uh, increased uh, quite significantly, and they were able to sell all of their products that they were uh, harvesting. So they told other farmers that, you know, the, from the other neighboring uh, villages, and suddenly everyone wanted to like register for uh, Tani Hub, and because you know more and more farmers asked, uh, kept contacting me. So, you know, I, I thought that, wow, you know, like this is actually something that, that really um, is useful. And I've always wanted to uh, create um, impactful things uh, for people. So that's how, like, um, I gathered a team and we eventually, you know, started doing Tiny Hub seriously. And the traction has, you know, since then been, been increasing um, uh, month by month. So, you know, uh, around six months later, we we eventually agreed that we would resign from our um, you know current work and go full you know full focus on Tani Hub. Then, like uh, approximately one year later, we got uh, our initial funding from Alpha GWC Ventures. 
That's that's quite an incredible story. Absolutely. And, um, you know, uh, the positive word of mouth um, of the farmers helped you gain the momentum and the confidence that this is something that you should actually take up full time. Um, Having said that, we all know that agriculture is a very tough sector to be a part of. You know, there's a large majority of farmers who are smallholder farmers. They are widely dispersed in remote locations. There are multiple middlemen between farmer to consumer. There's always the risk of natural disasters and crop failures. And then on the other hand, there is this huge growing middle class consumers and small businesses that are demanding better quality and cheaper prices for fresh produce. So with so many challenges around you, what would you say were the reasons behind Tani Hub's success? Well, um, the reasons were actually just exactly what you you mentioned there. So like on the farm side, most of these farmers are, you know, around 92% of the Indonesian farmers are actually smallholder farmers. So they typically um, only have one or two access to market, which are typically middlemen. These farmers, um, they work uh, in groups, but they're, you know, they always have difficulty to um, not just access uh, the market, but also um, funding and also knowledge. And and these are always, these farmers are, are always in trouble basically, and, and, and they're always poor. And that's why we uh, think that, you know, if we provide a solution on access to as simple as just informing them, uh, okay, this is a market here. And like, you can get funds if you, if you can, you know, if you have a consistent supply uh, and quality of uh, certain goods, then you know, like it, you know, it it really uh, attracts all these farmers to start working with um, with us you know, as a platform for uh, market and uh, financing. And for like the the buyer side, every buyer uh, wants like uh, products that are uh, much cheaper, uh, better quality, and the most important thing is consistency because. As a business, uh, like an F&B business, they, they don't want, you know, like, okay, you can provide cheap uh, products, uh, good products, but then, you know, maybe you'll miss the shipment uh, or, you know, like the, you'll, you'll miss like the delivery of, of uh, the products like the next few days or something like that. So it actually uh, causes, you know, some problems in their business. So for them, they, they actually, consistency is number one, um, uh, the quality is number two, and then actually pricing is number three. So what we do in Tani Hub Group, we actually try to, uh, you know, bridge this and actually decrease the price disparity uh, between the farmer and the buyer. So the farmer actually, since they have more access to uh, market, so they can actually have a better pricing. As for the buyers, they they have, you know, an access to like thousands of farmers now instead of like one or two agents. So they actually have a better pricing uh, on the on the on the commodities on the goods to for them to use. Well, so what you're saying is that your model, which comprises of, uh, you know, which is focused both on the farmers as well as the buyers and the supply chain network connecting it, is able to deliver value to both ends. So you, the farmers get a better price and the buyers get a lower price, which is actually a win-win situation for all the stakeholders. Uh, um, and it's not that uh, there's money moving from one to the other. It's actually both of them are benefiting through this unique model that Tani Hub has been able to create. Uh, you also have gotten the financing leg. So there is this, uh, you mentioned about market linkage, and then there is the financing piece, which is your Tani fund. And then there is the logistics and supply piece where through which you're actually moving uh, uh, the uh, the agri produce. So talk, uh, uh, talk to us about the linkage between these three. Why do you have all of these components uh, and why did you choose to do everything rather than focus on just one part? Okay, so that's the question that all of our investors ask. Like, uh, they always say, why are you, do, I, why are you doing like uh, everything? You know, where you're doing too many things at the same time. Well, you know, this is exactly why uh, there are 48 other similar platforms, but none of them are, you know, as fast growing and as, as, uh, as large as us. 
the reason is agriculture is a highly fragmented uh, sector. And the reason why, you know, like uh, these farmers, um, you know, can't meet the market sometimes is also because, uh, you know, they don't have proper um, like inputs uh, so that they can produce like the, the, the quality uh, that the market needs. So first of all, like, you know, the, this agri sector is tough. It's really tough. Like you, the, both the farmers and the buyers, they, they must meet uh, on the on the timing of the of the harvest, the quality right. of the harvest, the quantity of the harvest, and last is the pricing. So unless all four of these uh, are fulfilled, there's no transaction happening. So farmers, they you know they always um, like they plant uh, based on like what their farm uh, what their uh, neighbor farmers are also planting. So the same commodity, same time. So this is why the price fluctuation is very high in Indonesia. Second, they always buy uh, whatever inputs are available in their area, which means like sometimes there's a, the, the seeds that they're using are actually not the best seeds. So they spend like a months of um, cultivating, but then like the result is like probably only 20% is grade A, uh, another 20% is grade B, and the rest is grade C and below. So these great uh, you know these great C's and belows they they can't be sold to um the supermarkets or the hotel restaurant caterings that, uh, or even the households in 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 the cities so usually uh, they're very low value so that's why um the farmers don't don't earn that much and the last part is even though if the farmer has um you know market and finds the market um they if they don't have a proper processing, packaging, and delivery, you know these these goods are um, as good as like bad. You know, basically they, they they can get damaged, they can get bruised, they can uh, they become waste. So uh, I've actually experienced, um, you know, the, the reason why we actually really uh, like try to do everything is also like from uh, my experience. So I actually I, I went to the, to several farms. I, I went through the process of um, harvesting, and then I actually, uh, um, you know, joined the truck that that was carrying all the produce. And I saw like, okay, you know, all these vegetables, all these uh, fruits are stacked, and you know, like uh, they're not properly uh, boxed or even separated. So like the at the the bottom of the layer on on, on the stack always gets damaged. So by the time it reaches the the wet market or, or like the traditional market. Uh, around 10 to 15 percent already damaged and then during the sorting they they sort it like uh, really you know like uh, not properly so another 10 percent gets damaged and then after that because they don't have market um, they don't have the uh, like uh, immediate market so they still wait for people to come so you know uh, every day there's another five percent uh, of the waste and you know they don't they, they don't have cold storage right it's uh, they're under the sun and all that and you know, it just eventually you'll see why the products are expensive. You know, like uh, why why the buyers are paying a, a higher price is because there's so much waste. And this is why in Tanihub Group we we try to do like the entire end-to-end supply chain process because first by giving the farmers funding they can buy proper seeds, proper fertilizers. So instead of like uh, grade A and B. Uh, being only 30 to 40 percent, we actually help them increase it to 70 to 80 percent. And because because they have more uh, good quality uh, products, um, we can have a. It's easier for us to find a market for them and uh, give them a better pricing. So their income uh, actually increases quite a lot. So it ranges from uh, 20 to 50 percent uh, of you know in, income increase. And and because you know, like um, we have good products from the from the farmers, more and more buyers also come to us because they know that oh, Tani Hub actually has the has the best uh, quality products at, at a really a good price. And the last thing is, you know, once we deliver uh, the products, uh, we sort it, uh, we grade it properly. Uh, so like the grading, if if the buyer asks for a grade A or grade B, we consistently can give them. Grade A and Grade B with the same, um, you know, like color, with the same uh, size and also sweetness. So we have a very sophisticated uh, grading system too. Uh, 
like not uh, it's partly manual, but also uh, but also like we have an automated um, process to on the grading. And because of you know we we do it very fast and and we process it also um, really uh, well. So you know the waste the amount of waste can be reduced significantly from initially like the traditional supply chain would be like three um, percent, but now we we drop it uh, up to like uh, until three percent. So it's actually uh, quite a lot a significant change on on the waste side. So from your business model that you've just described, there are multiple problem statements that you are addressing. For example, you're providing market linkage to farmers so that they have a better choice of, uh, of where to sell and price to sell. You're reducing the post-harvest wastage very significantly. You're improving the supply chain and the transportation from rural areas into urban consumption centers. And you're offering cheaper prices to buyers. Um, over and above this, you talked about, you know, giving funding to farmers to so that they are able to buy better inputs, invest in their farms and make, you know, uh, move towards better cultivation and choice of crops that they are uh, uh, growing. So most of the agri financing space is actually hugely underpenetrated. You know, um, the biggest pain point for farmers is to get uh, uh, funding from, uh, you know, traditional sources and banks, uh, because they all ask for collateral. Um, what's, how are you doing this differently and bridging this gap in financing of the farmers? Okay. Yes, that is spot on. Um, so a lot of farmers here, you know, not, not just perceived as, um, high risk because, you know, people think that agree, oh, there's so many problems. But also these farmers, um, they don't have collateral. And right now, uh, what we do to help them get financing is uh, we ask them to trade through Tani Hub first so we can build some kind of reputation, um, like hist history of uh, transactions. And because of that, you know, we, we, we can be confident in lending them through our peer-to-peer -peer lending platform. But that's that's just like the, the the first few steps. Second step, we actually you know once they once they are uh, they have a track record through our peer to peer, we actually refer them to the banks so that they can get a much cheaper um, you know uh, funding rate uh, and also you know they can get a bigger amount because in peer to peer lending you know the the, the most that we can give them is around one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but for groups that are um, you know that actually are bigger they need actually more than that and this is where uh, the banks uh, step in and we we refer them to the banks because we build their um, like uh, like scoring and also their uh, historical transaction um, one fun fact is actually funding for farmers um, is abundant in in Indonesia it's just that because these fundings are from banks uh, they need they need a really, um, you know, uh, credit scoring, like a really strong credit scoring. They need uh, a lot of uh, proof that these farmers won't uh, won't default. Uh, you know, like uh, there's a pro there's a low probability of defaulting, and that's why you know, like for us, we're we're trying we're actually trying to build more on the credit scoring uh, side, um, like using the data that these farmers generate either through the, our transactions or through the farmer app that we we made for them. So the farmer app actually contains a lot of content on uh, like learnings and also like um, what they, they should do on the reporting of their cultivation. So why why are we doing um, like, why are we like tracking all of this? It's because, you know, we want to know like the character of the farmers. And this this would be, you know, a farmer that, that wants to learn and also a farmer that's disciplined in, in tracking all of the progress. Uh, tends to be like a, a safer, um, you know, a, a individual or a group that, that that the banks are more confident to lend to. So this is why, you know, this is this is some kind of alternative um, data driven uh, based kind of lending instead of the traditional uh, collateral based lending that that we're trying to do and, and support the farmers because a successful farmer means success, a successful supplier for us too. Right? 
Right, right. And it's interesting that you say there's actually enough capital available for lending to farmers. The big challenge is that they do not have the means of doing the credit assessment of the farmers. And what uh, what Tani Hub is doing is to is to bridge that gap by using data, by using the uh, uh, the commerce supply chain uh, 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 trade flows, and embedding finance as part of that, based on the sales flows rather than based on land and other hard collateral. And this way, you are making sure that the capital that's available finds its way to the most needy farmer. And on the other hand, the farmers are able to build their track record and credit uh, score by uh, showing, uh, uh, you know, greater sales through the Tani Hub platform and get access to funding, which allows them to invest more and earn more. So it's kind of a virtuous cycle that you're kicking off. Uh, um, in which uh, uh, everybody uh, um, gains and there is a sustained income growth that you're able to drive for the farmers. It's incredible how you've got this entire thing uh, worked out in a very linked manner. Um, let's let's talk about, you know, of course, we are all aware that COVID has stress tested all business models. Um, uh, and of course, it's great to see that Tani Hub emerged stronger through this pandemic. Um, uh, Tani Hub revenue grew by more than 600% in 2020 over 2019. Um, I'm sure there were lots of challenges that you faced through 2020. Um, share with us, how did you overcome them? What, were, uh, what, did, what was the 2020 year like and what uh, made you kind of emerge so much stronger? Okay, so it was... If I can put it into like two words, it's uh, amazing chaos uh, for us. Uh, amazing because, you know, we, we grew uh, quite a lot, you know, during this period, but also it was chaos. You know, the, the, the you know, the experience <laughs> during the growth was just chaos, chaotic. Um, and, you know, during, during the pandemic, uh, like panic uh, in uh, last year, so a lot of farmers um, lost. Uh, their access to market, uh, like the existing uh, access to market, because you know all these restaurants, uh, all these hotels that that previously, uh, you know, sourced uh, from these farmers, they had to close, and you know, business dropped. So you know, uh, but what what increased significantly was actually um, you know B two C, like households uh, that. That were afraid to go to the market. They're afraid to go to the supermarket. They're afraid to go to restaurants. Um, so, like you know, that skyrocketed. Um, so that actually helped us in in many ways. One is B two C has always been one of our uh, you know tough uh, market to penetrate because a lot of people don't like the idea of you know I actually uh, don't want someone else to pick the vegetables or the fruits for me. I actually want to see the fruits myself, and that's why I don't want to uh, trust like on uh, buying fruit and vegetables online. Um, but during the pandemic, no one actually wants to go out, and everyone tried uh, using platforms like like Tani Hub, and they and you know once they received their their, their fruit and vegetables uh, at home, they saw that well actually you know uh, the quality is really good, and now I trust uh, Tani Hub to. Um, you know, uh, fresh produce. Uh, second, uh, previously it was difficult for us to also get um, to convince some of the farmers to go on board because they all felt that, oh, I already can go directly to to the supermarket. Oh, I can go directly to these restaurants. Uh, but you know, since these restaurants closed, you know, like they they panic because they are they're harvesting, but no one's uh, there to offtake. So they all came uh, to register uh, to us. So in fact, I, I had like uh, calls from three governors of, uh, you know, different states, all asking us to collaborate to, you know, because, you know, all these farmers have been like visiting, uh, going to, to their office and then like screaming like, oh, you know, who's going to take, um, who's going to be our, our offtaker. So they all came to us and we, we did like um, like onboarding plan, and we actually onboarded thirty thousand farmers during like uh, that one year alone. And and the third thing is also um, a lot of businesses uh, also, you know, those they closed, some closed, 
but also some new businesses emerged because from from the B2C, um, you know, a lot of, you know, apart from uh, the, the, the new buyers, uh, the new clients that are buying for their households, a lot of people started their own business online and, you know, selling through Instagram. They, they started cooking uh, um, uh, some dishes and, and selling caterings. Uh, so, you know, this business also started booming. So, um, you know, we, we found a new segment, uh, a new, you know, way for uh, new buyers and and now you know we've been supporting them and their business has been growing and you know since they are you know they don't need a physical uh, like store or, or restaurant they actually uh, sell pretty good food like online and this has been you know uh, something you know that that that's that's been a trend right now in Indonesia and you know people like it because uh, it's it's good tastes nice and it's uh, you know, they can cook fancy stuff but uh, half the price of the restaurant. So for us, um, the pandemic has been has been a shock, but also a, a, a good shock and and open more opportunities. Eka, this has been a very insightful conversation with a number of takeaways for our audience today. Um, you know, you've designed your business model along the triangle of commerce, logistics and embedded finance. And, you know, by actually taking a shot at the multiple components that has helped you control the outcomes and capture a larger share of value creation. Um, second, I would say your focus on improving the lives of the farmers has helped build long term loyalty and affinity from them. And third, I think what you just said is never to waste a crisis. Some of your best uh, 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 new business ideas and productivity improvements emerged during the pandemic and have allowed you to benefit from the crisis rather than crumble from it. Uh, um, uh, Thank you so much, Eka, for this wonderful conversation and for sharing these insights with us. Uh, It has been an absolute delight. Yes, uh, thank you, Smita, for having me here. And thank you also for Flourish Ventures. Uh, you know, you've been amazing on like giving us uh, inputs on like how to improve, you know, our work with the farmers so that, you know, we have more stickiness and more loyalty with them. And, you know, we, all, we always believe that, you know, the more impact that we give to our partners, uh, the more, you know, impact that they will give back to us uh, in a positive way. Eka, as the CEO and founder, you have a responsibility to motivate and energize your entire team. I'm curious to know what motivates you personally and what have you set as your next big goal for Tani Hub? Okay, that's a good one because um, what motivates me and excites me every day is the team that actually feels motivated and excited because um, because you know I give them uh, challenging work, I mentor them, I also you know uh, tell them that you know what they're building is something that no one else has ever built, which is actually true. And you know these people actually you know since a lot of them are the younger uh, generation, so they all work not just for money but also for impact. They they want us they want to be. Uh, a generation that has changed uh, something that you know the previous generation never managed to change. So they all want to be um, you know write their name in history as oh I I help these farmers like get access to far uh, to market to funding and I change lives of people. So that actually uh, motivates them and actually it it makes me excited to go to uh, work every day and. For what I have in mind for Tani Hub in, in the future is uh, one that we want to go uh, more deeper on the upstream. So for us to actually build more uh, impact uh, for like not just the farmers, but also the economy of, uh, of the rural areas and their villages is actually, you know, we want to build like mini warehouses because right now we have large, uh, huge um, 25,000 um, meter square warehouses. But right now, what I'm thinking about is actually why not we downsize it, like shrink it 
make a mini one, like maybe uh, only 50 meters squares uh, and uh, put it, you know, right next to the farms so that these farmers can actually manage their own warehouse and probably, you know, reduce waste uh, even more and, you know, try to deliver to, to uh, customers that are around them. So customers would, would not just be in the cities, but also near the rural areas too. And, be, and us as a, uh, as a platform, as a tech platform would be more, you know, less assets uh, and more on the technology to uh, that we provide to them to manage like the supply and demand uh, part. A big thank you to our audience today. If you have any questions regarding today's discussion, Flourish Ventures or any of our portfolio companies, email us at events at flourishventures.com. Until the next edition, this is Smita Agarwal and Pamitra Veneka signing off for today. Thank you for joining us.